Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> My name is Jessica Perry, and I would like to I would like to say that this program has um, helped me out a lot from getting counseling to the pampas from Ms. Mildred and her encouraging words throughout my pregnancy. Um, telling me that it was going to be just fine and not to worry um, too much. Yes, she was right because I had a healthy, beautiful baby girl yes, named Harley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My friend Monica says, nah, can't do it, can't do it. I said, okay, I love you anyway. She called me back. I think I may try. <laughs> so, Monica in her own way. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Patterson, and I was just going to talk about my experience. When I found out I was expecting, I went to a doctor for an exam. When the doctor returned, I didn't expect to hear uh, from him, the two heartbeats are doing fine. <laughs> at that moment, we must, have, we must have looked at the doctor like we had seen the ghost, because the doctor said to us, I'm sorry, is this news to you? I didn't know I was the first to tell you that you're having twins, but congratulations. <laughs> Taking care of a nine-year-old is expensive on a fixed income. Now I were to add two more. I came to see Nurse Mildred for counseling because I was worried about financial responsibilities that would come with having twins. During the first session, one issue we talked about were, were preparation for the babies. I didn't have any baby items. After we talked about these issues, I felt everything would be okay. Before the babies were born, I received a call inviting me to a baby shower at Safe Haven. It helped out a lot because I received such items such as car seats, diapers, and mm. clothes. Today, each twin, they, uh, they have their own medical issues that we still discuss. Counseling has been a positive experience because it has helped manage different emotions that could seem stressful. My kids definitely have changed my life for the better and I have accepted this new lifelong challenge. But I would like to say thank you to Safe Haven, um, Ms. M Ms. Mildred Richardson, and Ms. Sandra Street and all of the supporters and donators um, to Safe Haven. Uh, this is my story but I'm sure there's a lot more women who have their own, that have their own story that I know that Safe Haven, Safe Haven has helped and they will provide for them in the future. Hey. Wonderful. Thank you both. Now, who is it that provides the help at South Haven? As I said, for some reason, our name is trying to be changed to Safe Haven. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not only with our clients, in the community. And it is a place. We have young teens that are actually in fear of their lives because they decide to parent instead of having an abortion. So it is a place that they can come to to get advice as to what they should do. <coughs> so who provides the help at South Haven? Let me start.
start with who I call the real problem solvers of our ministry. And the help that they provide is which makes it possible for us to exist, and that's our board of directors. Celine is gonna come and talk and introduce them later, but I just wanna say to each of you, thank you for being the problem solvers that you are. A lot of people tell me, well, they like to donate to special programs. They don't like doing finance for operational costs. I says, well, if there's no building, if there's no lights, if there's no heat, <laughs> we can't do those special programs that you would like to donate. <laughs> so they help with the building and, gr and grounds concerns. They provide for the many needs of our clients. Uh, do you have enough pamphlets? Just tell us what you need at the meeting. They find out what it is that the center needs and get busy finding the solution. They are truly the wind beneath my wings. I would like to introduce a person right now who comes faithfully on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. She answers the phone, helps to greet our clients, and make them comfortable. She solves my many, many computer problems and hey, aid with my many typing needs. You just ask her and she'll do it. Would you stand, Diane Miller? Now, we have someone who does the testing, the counseling, the cleaning, follow-up calls, clothing duty, and so, so much more. And of course, instead of trying to tell me that you can only do so much in a day, she does that that she can. And of course, we have the lovely and amazing honoree Sandra Street that I'm talking about. for giving me this opportunity to just share what a blessing it is to be a counselor and to give honor to Almighty God because he has kept me, brought me, and made it possible for me to serve. I'm eternally grateful. It's all right, Mom. Counseling is a blessing. It's truly a blessing. As we receive our clients, I'll make it personal because I'm speaking for myself. As I meet these precious teenagers, young ladies, I first want to let them know that even before we talk, we love them and we care about them. I love them. I care about them. As soon as they register, I pray and ask God to open my eyes and my heart to their needs 
that I may say what he would have me to say. I move myself and I want God to be reflected in everything that I say. So I take the young ladies, the young ladies into the counseling room and I listen. I want to hear what they have to say. There are questions that we ask, as Norman has said, they fill out a form. So I already know something about them. But I want them to tell me. I want to hear from them what is on their hearts. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes they come in bitter. They're angry. Someone has said something to them or they're just angry because they're in the position that they're in. Sometimes they don't want to even hear what I have to say. But I listen. And then I tell them that they have come into our doors for a service. And I am here to provide that service. So I want to hear what they have to say and I want them to feel comfortable. And as we are in the room together and I listen and the Lord tells me what to say, then their barriers break down most of the time. And I know then that the Lord has opened the door for me to say the words that they need to hear. It's not always what they want to hear because they have already made themselves feel comfortable with their lifestyle. But it's a lifestyle that has led them to a better place. So as I continue to follow the leading of the Lord, I talk to them about the choices that they have made, and as especially those that have professed Christianity, I remind them of what God would have them to do. What does God think about what you're doing according to his word. And we have a Bible in the counseling room that um, I'm able to share God's word with them. There are some that don't want to hear that and I don't force anything on them. Again, I'm listening and just trying to make them understand that there is a right way and a wrong way. The wrong way will continue to lead you into bad situations. The right way will lead you to the power of God and what he can do and will do if you allow him to lead you and if you trust him. This is especially for those who are abortion minded because a lot of them haven't thought about the fact that this baby is a gift from God, that God has already ordained their life. They haven't thought about that. But as I remind them, then they, even the hardest one, will calm down and their hearts will be open. Some just a little bit, where they will continue to think about abortion, but there are those whose hearts are open and their minds are changed. And this time is a time of celebration for me because they have chosen, those who have said that they would abort their baby, they have chosen to save their child's life. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs>
So this is a time that This is a time of rejoice. Yes. 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 Because they now see that not only has uh, God shown his love for them, which I tell them first, God loves you, he loves this child that you're carrying. He is a partner. He's a partner with you. He will be faithful. Now it's your job. What is your choice? Are you going to take care of this child? So this is the main purpose of South Haven pregnancy. We want to save these babies' life through the word of God and changing the minds of clients who have not even thought about it or do not even realize. Some of them don't even realize, as Mildred has mentioned, some of them don't even realize that they're actually carrying a baby. They haven't even thought about it. They think that it's so early that it's not even a baby yet. Oh, hallelujah. They don't know. But we do have the word of God that says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I love you. And I and and uh, we use uh, Psalm 139 often, where he talks about I knew you before you were formed. And it just opens their eyes, and we are just 